Folks, welcome to Rocket Science 101. Today we're going to talk about three different methods, the Newtonian method, the Oberth effect, and the Edelbaum maneuver to escape a circular orbit at a high speed. Let's go ahead, check it out. All right, folks, so let's first draw the Earth right here. And let's say our satellite is in circular orbit around the Earth. So that right there is its circular orbit. Here's the satellite. And let's say this satellite is in a geostationary orbit. What is a geostationary orbit, you might ask? A geostationary orbit works like this. Imagine you see a satellite in the sky. And the next day, you see the same satellite in the same exact spot. And so on and so forth. The next day, you see the same thing. That only happens for geostationary satellites, which have a period of one day. That's why you see them in the same spot every day. They also have another condition, which is that they have to orbit the Earth around the equatorial plane. And finally, the geostationary satellites have to have the final condition, which is that they have to orbit in the same direction as the Earth is spinning. Okay? So, and the final condition and the implicit condition is that they're circular. Okay, these are the three, the three and or four, if you want to count the circular part of a geostationary satellite. And the geostationary satellites typically orbit about 36,000 kilometers uh, from the Earth. Okay, uh, now if you want to escape the Earth, all you have to do is make a boost tangentially. Sir Isaac Newton told us that a long time ago. Uh, so that's a classic way to escape the Earth uh, from a circular orbit. What's a different way? The second way is like this. There's the Earth, there's my circular orbit, and let's say there's my satellite. Now my satellite is going to boost that way, right? That's a Newtonian way to escape an orbit. Here's a different way. Let's say I have a circular orbit around the Earth. That, that right there is my circular orbit. And now let's say that's my satellite. Let's say my satellite is going, going, going. It's going around its merry way, around the circular path. But now it wants to escape the Earth, right? It's going to boost, it's going to accelerate in the opposite direction and fall into the Earth's gravitational well. It's going to fall in and at perigee, that spot right there when the satellite is closest to the Earth is perigee. The moment it's at perigee, it's going to boost. So when it makes its first impulse, it's going to create a, an elliptical path for, for the satellite. And that's its farthest point at its farthest position, that's apogee. Uh, you might also call it periapsis or apoapsis. But the moral of the story is when the satellite is closest to the Earth at perigee, it's going to make a boost impulse number two. That's the second impulse. And it's going to boost out of the Earth's orbit. It's going to boost out of its circular orbit and create a hyperbolic trajectory. Okay, that right there is the Oberth, the Oberth effect, also known as a two impulse maneuver, because you're using two bursts of, of energy to get out of the circular orbit. The final method for escaping a, a circular orbit is known as the Edelbaum maneuver. It was created by Edelbaum in 1959 around the dawn of the space age. In fact, 1959 is, is the date that is the year that NASA was created. So it's no surprise Edelbaum came up with this at that time. So let's say you have a circular orbit around the Earth. And um, you know what? This isn't looking too good. I'm, I gotta erase this. Um, hey, Rifat, can you pick up the eraser? Let's erase this. All right, Rifat's on this thing. Uh, we just have to wait until he listens and realizes he made a, a severe mistake. All right, great. Finally, he erased it. So, here's the Earth, and let's draw our circular orbit once again. And let's say I put my satellite somewhere there, just for you know clar clarification purposes. Okay, now what's going to happen? Our first impulse is going to be right, well, it doesn't have to be anywhere, really. Our, our, our a satellite is traveling along, there's our first impulse, and that creates an elliptical orbit, just like that. Okay, now why did I make an elliptical orbit? Well, it's because of my first impulse. And that elliptical orbit is going to give me a clever mechanism. Let's say my satellite is going along the elliptical orbit, going, going, and suddenly at apogee, the farthest distance from the Earth, at apogee, my satellite is going to burn again, it's going to impulse number two. And that burn is going to create another elliptical orbit. And this second elliptical orbit is going to have a periapsis much closer to the Earth than the first elliptical orbit. So because of this second impulse, what's going to happen? I'm going to have 
another elliptical orbit that goes very close to the Earth. And right at perigee, at perigee, I'm gonna burn again. That's gonna be my third impulse right there. That's my third burn. It's gonna take me out of circular orbit into hyperbolic trajectory. Okay, so that's how I can escape the Earth. So I went from a circular orbit to an elliptical orbit to another elliptical orbit, okay? And that's how the Edelbaum maneuver works. Okay, folks? So now what I wanna do is go ahead and review each of the three methods we discussed for leaving circular orbit around, well, any, any celestial body, actually. First one was classical. It was created by Sir Isaac Newton. Next one was Oberth by, of course, Oberth. And then the Edelbaum maneuver. The classical method, of course, it came around the 1600s. That's when class, uh, Sir Isaac Newton published Principia. The Oberth came around 1929, and Edelbaum came 1959. The classical method said this. You have the Earth, your circular orbit, you boost tangentially, and you're gone. That creates your hyperbolic, your hyperbolic uh, thing. Second way is the Oberth method, the two-impulse maneuver. You burn once uh, around the circular orbit. Anytime in your circular orbit, you burn once so that you can fall into the Earth's gravitational well. And once you fall in at perigee or at periapsis, you're going to burn again. That's your second impulse. And once you make your second impulse at perigee, that's it. You're gone. You're gone into hyperbolic orbit. That is the Oberth effect. And the classical method is basically one impulse. Oberth is two impulse. Now let's look at Edelbaum, which is three impulse. So what's going to happen? Well, there's your satellite in, in circular orbit and you're going to boost, right? You're going to impulse once to create an elliptical orbit. So right there, that's your elliptical orbit. And then at the apogee of your elliptical orbit, you're going to burn again. And so that's going to bring you uh, an elliptical orbit very close to the Earth. And at the perigee of that elliptical orbit, you're going to make your third burn. So first burn at circular, third, second burn at apoapsis, third burn at perigee. And that's it, folks. Escape a circular oh. orbit. These are the three methods for escaping a circular orbit, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. The ambition plus MKO plus scaffolding equal learning. We believe anyone can learn anything. That's why our motto is memorization is a crime, and that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. The first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become the, the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. science.